Welcome to a discussion this morning of the valve market in Western Europe. This is a presentation that was actually made last week by Bob McElvain at Valve World Expo in Dusseldorf, West Germany. The market for uh, valves in Western Europe is, is certainly substantial and um, it's and important to integrate the market information into decision making. So this very detailed effort to provide information uh, in, in uh, and actually thousands and thousands, probably more than 20,000 forecasts just for Western Europe uh, valve opportunities is uh, detailed enough that allows you to make a lot of decisions uh, at a very micro level. But Western Europe uh, has been divided into 16 major countries and then an aggregation of small countries to provide uh, 17 meaningful segments. And it's uh, uh, a whole part of a whole program that we have here that includes the 4A knowledge needs, or we call it 4AIS um, for, for a intelligence system, and it includes alerts, answers, analysis, and advancement. And market uh, forecasting information is useful in the whole program of supplying all those needs for the sales people. And detailed market information by country, valve, and industry should be considered for every staffing travel product and promotional uh, activity. And the countries in Western uh, Europe uh, are shown here. The 2015 World Valve Sales uh, is displayed in this manner where you see West Europe is 8.6 billion um, or about 15 percent of the total. Now the uh, way that is segmented is into a number of different industries, as shown here. But it should be pointed out that these do not include domestic valves, commercial marine, or fire protection. They do not include mobile uh, valves used in automobiles, nor the small valves used in uh, fluid power and hydraulics. The valve purchases in, 19, uh, in 2019 are divided by these uh, 18, 17 segments, and you can see that the three major are Germany, which will be purchasing over two billion, France at a billion, Italy at a billion, and the United Kingdom at a, at 1.3 billion. The others uh, are all smaller. The other Western Europe includes uh, Gibraltar and and Greenland and other uh, countries with very small individual uh, purchases. The whole report is based on providing this level of detail, which is in the case of Austria, we're projecting ball valves for the chemical industry segmented between control and on off. So we're down in 2015 to a market uh, projecting that's only $170,000. So this is a level of detail that is small enough that it can be analyzed uh, by the individual salesman in the area and is actionable in terms of planning. Equally important is the integration of this market into information into a complete sales strategy. Our contention is that there is three elements to a successful sales strategy, which is knowledge, organization, and collaboration. So the knowledge of the products is the foundation, and the knowledge of these markets is part of, the, of that uh, product knowledge. But the organization's ability to deliver this knowledge to the right people at the right time and collaboration is the sharing of this information throughout the organization in a manner that is most beneficial. 
But with the organization, you can be providing the relevant information to all parties, and therefore this facilitates the collaboration. And the key to success is voluntary participation. The sales representative will participate fully if he can determine how best to collaborate and do so voluntarily. And the bottoms-up voluntary strategy allows salesmen in different regions to contact each other and compare notes on a project which involves both. The top-down strategy uh, is, uh, um, with division heads forcing collaboration, is tough to implement. It's time-consuming and difficult because divisions are inherently power-seeking rather than power-sharing. Another way to look at market information in terms of the total knowledge needs is that each segment of the um, company needs both background information and information for specific decisions. So general management needs long-term market forecasts, but they need specific information on, on a regular basis in order to make decisions. Marketing needs industry trends, but they also have, have to have specific uh, information to make these advertising decisions. And of course, at the local information, uh, local level, it's very important to have process information, which we would include in background information, to be able to walk into a customer plant and understand what the process is of course he has to understand his valve features and comparisons to competitors and should have some knowledge of the competition but again from a very specific uh, basis he needs as much detailed forecasting as he can uh, uh, have in order to make uh, decisions about where to spend his his time the uh, looking at it again from the difference how you divide these uh, needs background and and immediate into alerts answers analysis and advancement uh, there's some need uh, certainly by each of the uh, uh, types of uh, divisions in a company uh, for all the f for four needs alerts answers analysis and advancement so regulatory developments for instance uh, are ones which general management uh, uh, needs as well as uh, in the uh, certainly the uh, uh, other uh, other groups within the company and regional sales forecasts are more uh, directed at the regional sales managers and the local sales managers uh, technology development certainly there is a, a need to understand that um, and to provide answers for those questions at, at, uh, among a number of the divisions. The uh, project information is something that general management doesn't need to be that involved in, but certainly the local and, and regional sales managers, the ones that need the alerts, the answers, their analysis uh, of the project uh, activity. And of course, process knowledge, it's not an alert function, but it is one where you need answers on a regular basis. Uh, there's a need for analysis. How do, how do your products fit in to a particular process? And then, of course, for advancement, uh, the industry is technology forcing. So a lot of the new opportunities for valves will come from understanding the newer processes. The forecasts have to be backed up by even more detailed information and for instance for Germany having the megawatts of flue gas to sulfurization systems that will be installed uh, tells you quite a bit about exactly what kind of valves will be required and then of course you have to take this to the specific projects you need to also evaluate these numbers in terms of how much of it's going to be valve replacement how much it's going to be new and that would depend where you spend your sales time. In terms of the valve uh, opportunities, another way to look at them is categorizing all these different industries by whether it's production 
wastewater cooling or water treatment. In terms of production, there are a lot of very different applications, but in terms of water treatment, cooling, and to some extent wastewater, lesser, lesser on wastewater, but certainly on the water treatment and cooling, the valves that are used in one chem industry would be identical to the ones used in another industry. So it's uh, very important to make those types of segmentations as well. And as we said before, knowing the process is critical. And more and more detail is being available. We're uh, now providing uh, process flow diagrams on 5,000 different valves in nuclear power plants. This happens to be uh, natural gas pipelines. We talked about understanding new processes. This coal to gas and coal to liquids is now a huge market in China. There will be a, uh, several big plants even in the Ukraine. And India and uh, Pasco in Korea has just put in a coal gasifier. So there's a lot of activity where, uh, and a lot of different valves. The, the Sasol plant, which was one of the first coal, to, it was the first coal to liquids plant outside of the uh, Germany in World War II, when it went into operation in the 1970s, uh, had 180,000 valves. And many of the plants that are going in China are much bigger than that. And there's a lot of detailed uh, uh, needs. Uh, when you get, to, for instance, anti-surge valves, it's a whole different ball game, and this happens to be for a uh, compressor station. And in the natural gas industry, there's hundreds of processes, and each one has a number of uh, different valves, and the processes can vary depending on the contaminants in the fuel and the types of, um, of fuel that are being extracted. LNG is another uh, example of, of where there are many, many different uh, applications. So you've got the liquefaction side, and then you've got the regasification side uh, as well. And the use of this detailed market information is illustrated on a decision as to whether you should set up a sales office in Germany to sell a new pharmaceutical on-off globe valve. You know, first, you determine that the a valve market in Germany is going to be 1.9 billion. That the pharmaceutical market uh, will be growing to 61 million, and uh, the globe market will only will be 15 million out of that total in the pharmaceutical industry. And on-off will be 13 million. Uh, the valve is going to be used in the processing segment, so that represents uh, only a 7.8 million dollar a year potential. And it will be primarily for new plants, so that's, you know, or, or, or there's a bigger opportunity in the new plants. So that's a $2.3 billion market versus uh, if they got a 50, if you got a 15% share, then that's 345000 a year. Uh, the replacement market's going to be tough because you don't have, since it's a new value, you, you know, you're going to be replacing an old with a, something different. So if you target a 5% there, uh, you could re you have a $618,000 a year market. So it's apparently a could be a million dollar market a year market in Germany. So it's probably worthwhile um, assigning somebody uh, to pursue that market. And you do the same thing uh, on uh, determine which conferences. There are hundreds of valve related conferences in Western Europe a year and determining even which ones to go to, let alone which ones, where you should exhibit, um, require uh, as much analysis as possible. So here is going to be the Industrial Valve Summit in Bergamo coming up next May. And the, uh, so certainly the, the, it, the market in Italy alone is a billion dollar market. But um, the oil and gas, but but the oil and gas uh, market in in Western in Europe is 671 million, but there could be Middle East visitors uh, since the Italian companies work very closely with the Middle East in oil and gas, and and that's a 2.8 billion dollar market, and um, the refining market is 135 million. So if uh, if you have a a refining valve uh, that you want to uh, be promoting, you better put a picture or two of that up there at the stand. 
And you, then you have to weigh it to other exhibits in Europe next year, such as the Achema show and, and the size of, uh, of that market. But, of course, you also got to evaluate um, the quality of the visitors that you're going to reach. Uh, and something like the Val Summit certainly seems like it's going to have uh, high-quality uh, people. So those are the kind of ways you make those decisions. The Then the next part of it, of course, is the uh, project information that the salesman has to be alerted to. And here, for instance, are a number of... Uh, gas turbine plants in operation uh, in Germany and so there are opportunities for valves in all these different uh, areas and the uh, problems that are coming up are something that you also have to track and gas turbines have problems and need to be uh, replaced with ones that uh, don't uh, have stellite delamination for instance and, of course, then your salespeople need the new projects. So here are the ones, for instance, that are going into Germany over the next uh, few years. And if you click on these, you get the details of the project and, and contacts. Same thing with Norway uh, oil and gas projects. Obviously, you need the people at those plants. Lots of times the purchasing person or the initial contact that you have at these uh, plants is not going to be the one that actually makes the decision and in many times it's embarrassing and difficult to try to get around that individual so having a database that shows the key people at each of these plants allows you to maybe even start with the people who are most likely to make the decisions and then work down to where you're uh, talking to the people that uh, are specifically involved in the paperwork aspect of it. So this is a rundown of what the um, market in West Europe is going to be for valves in the next uh, five or six years and also ways that you can use the very detailed information that's provided in the West Europe report. And if you'll link to the McElvain website, uh, you will see details on how to purchase that report, the nuclear valve report, and of course the main valve report that uh, has this kind of information for every country in the world. And thank you for your attention.